Good morning. Um, today is Alma chapter 8. And um, what's happening here is that um, after Alma gets done in the city of Gideon, he goes home to Zarahemla and he rests for a minute. And then he goes on to Ammonihah. And he begins to preach there, but the people are so wicked that they're just like, nah. And they kick him out of the city, and so he's like really discouraged. And he's like walking away, and an angel comes to him and says, you're okay, it's fine, go back. You gotta go back. So Amma goes back, and he meets Amulek, and Amulek takes him to his house and feeds him, and Alma blesses the household and then in the next chapter they're going to start preaching to the city so um, there's some things I want to share not a lot but some so um, in verses 7 to 9 well verse 9 it says they would not hearken unto the words of Alma and it gives a quote from Joseph Fielding Smith but it's actually a quote like Joseph Fielding Smith is quoting Joseph Smith and he says I think it is high time the prophet Joseph Smith wrote for a, for a Christian world to awake out of sleep and cry mightily to that God day and night whose anger we have justly incurred and um, I was like when I read that I, I was just kind of thinking like yep yeah, we have justly incurred his wrath, and we need to pray mightily for um, his forgiveness. Um, he goes on. It says, the condition of the world should be, he wrote, as a stimulant to arouse the faculties and call forth the energies of every man, woman, or child that possesses feelings of sympathy for their fellows or that is in any degree endangered oh endeared to the budding cause of our glorious lord anyways it's just saying that we should be concerned with our fellow men um alma is preaching the word he's trying to make his world a better place because he cares for his fellow men you can see that when he walks away so discouraged you know he he's um what are the words that it uses <laughs> much sorrow something um anyways i can't find it right now but and uh, so da, 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 da. Wrestling Mighty in Prayer. Um, yes. Okay. So the angel comes to him and he says, Rejoice. Don't lift up your head. Rejoice. For thou hast great for thou hast great cause to rejoice. For thou hast been faithful in keeping the commandments of God from the time which thou hast received the first message from him. Um, sorry. So, um, it says there is a lesson in the experience of Alma. Even though the people fail to heed his word, he still has reason to rejoice. According to the angel, for he has been faithful in keeping the commandments of God. And, uh... I liked this part because even though he's so discouraged, he's so sorrowful, he's downcast, you know, all that stuff, the angel comes to him and says, it's okay, it's okay, you've been good, you have reason to rejoice. And though we feel like right now in this day and age there's not much reason to rejoice, we still have reason to rejoice for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Okay. Um, here in this chapter, we're just establishing the law of witnesses, the book describes it as, where, um, from 2 Corinthians, 
Deuteronomy 17, uh, Matthew 18, and John 18, it says, In the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. And so Alma and Amulek are becoming those witnesses, two witnesses, to um, preach and testify to the people. So in the coming up chapters, Alma preaches and testifies of something, and then Amulek gets up and says, I know what he said is true because I've experienced it. So that's what we're establishing here. And it's talking a lot about missionary work because these chapters are a lot about missionary work. And so it gives a story about a mission president in Frankfurt, Germany, and he advised the, the mission. Um, what does it say? Uh, at the heart of his plan was the universal principle that one must teach by the Spirit and never engage in debate. Now, this is an issue for me because I debate quite a bit, especially with Gavin, because he's wrong. <laughs> but I need to learn to not debate and to um, go more, feel more by the Spirit. Um, anyways... When this mission president was president of the Central States Mission, he conducted a survey where, several, where he surveyed several thousand converts, and he learned that 82% of the converts knew the gospel was true the first time they heard the missionaries bear witness of it. Um, and so it says, Thus, in most cases, the transforming witness came not after a period of experience with the church, but immediately upon hearing the message for the first time as the missionary spoke with the power of the Spirit. And um, I think it's just trying to illustrate that when we have the Spirit with us, we're more likely to do good um, than if we debate. But um, anyway, so that was that story. And then it gives a really, well, an okay story, a good story about a Wyoming cowboy. And so in verse 32, it says, and it came to pass that they went forth and began to preach and prophesy unto the people according to the spirit and power, which the Lord had given them. So it gives a story of a Wyoming cowboy. He, um, he, ran a ranch in Wyoming because his father died when he was 15 and so he had to leave school. He was the main breadwinner for the family. He had to do everything that his father would have done. But when he turned 19, his bishop said, time to go on a mission. So he went on a mission. He felt ill-prepared. He felt inadequate. He wasn't learned. He had bad grammar. You know, he'd spent his days on the field. But he went somewhere, it doesn't say where he went, but on the first night in the field, a sister of the ward would have the missionaries over for dinner. And her husband was not a member. And it says that uh, he knew... He knew the scriptures very, very well. He knew everything that a Mormon missionary did not know on his first day in the mission field. After dinner, he would get these missionaries in a corner. He would try to embarrass them, and he found great delight in doing so. And then it goes on to say that the missionaries were determined to never let that happen again. And they would go home, and they would set their alarm clock early so that they could um, get more study time in. Well... The Wyoming boy came. He went to dinner. And Mr. Johnson, that's his name, got the boy in a corner. And, uh, what does it say? Uh, the missionary was embarrassed till tears came to his eyes. Isn't that sad? He's just sitting there in the corner crying. And he goes... He says in his head, he goes, all right, I'm going to go to my mission president in the morning and I'm going to tell him I got to go home. I'm not prepared for this. Look at, look at this experience. I'm not prepared. Then all of a sudden he felt something in him rise him up out of the chair and he grabs Mr. Johnson by the shoulders and he says, I can't debate with you. 
I can't, but if you'll listen to me for three or four minutes, I'll tell you a story. And it says that for five or six minutes, this young cowboy from Wyoming told the man the Joseph Smith story, the story that rang true in his heart. He had been taught the story at the knee of his mother. He used to read the story as he rode the range. He loved it, and he knew that it was true. And so he told it to Mr. Johnson with all of the sincerity of his heart. After five or six minutes had gone by, there were tears in the other eyes. And then it says to make a long story short, Mr. Johnson got baptized and this Wyoming cowboy did the baptizing. And um, it goes, it said that Mr. Johnson had heard the story several times from many different missionaries, college students, um, developed gifts, people just, you know, who were prepared. And it never, but he never heard it with the gift of the Spirit of God like he heard it from the unschooled lips of a cowboy from Wyoming on that wonderful day. He listened to something beyond the words that were traveling from lip to ear. There was something from the heart of this young missionary into his heart, bearing witness to him. This young man is telling me the truth, poorly as he is telling it, poor as his grammar is, I know that it is true because God is revealing it to me. And he joined this great church. So, um, that's all for chapter 8. But I really enjoyed that story. Not because it it was talking about how, oh, all these other missionaries couldn't do it. And only this, you know, unlearned cowboy, blah, blah, blah. It's showing the example of what what the spirit can do you know you're sitting there you're feeling inadequate you've got tears in your eyes but if you pray for the spirit to be with you you can rise up and bear a great testimony you know and maybe it won't change the heart of everyone who hears it but it can change your heart and it can change the heart of who it's meant to change you know when I hear stories like this, missionary stories like this, I think of Davis and Starla and how good they're doing. Well, how good Starla's doing and how good Davis did. I, he, like, I'm not with him, so I think he's still on his miss, mission, but he's not. Anyways, um, anyways, they're great missionaries, and I'm so glad that we have them in our family. All right, so that was Chapter 8, and uh, tomorrow is Chapter 9. So I will see you tomorrow. Bye.